Hi there, this is Lindy. Welcome to Lindy's Magpie Reads. So yesterday, April 30th, it was Canadian Independent Bookstore Day. This is something that uh, when I mentioned it to my friend Sean the Book Maniac, he said he hadn't heard of such a thing before. So I went and did some research. Well, it turns out that it was the um, Retail Council of Canada that used to do a bookstore day. And the Canadian Independent Bookstore Association took over the event, I think, last year. Well, anyway, they relaunched it last year. Because of the pandemic, there wasn't a lot of stuff going on then. I do remember it happening, though. Um, but this year, there were lots of things happening and I decided to take advantage of it. So I went to uh, my two favorite independent bookstores uh, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, where I live, Audrey's and the Glass Bookshop. At Audrey's, they had history tours on the hour. It's housed in a historic building, a brick building, and they had lots of great stories about things that have happened there over the years. Like, for example, um, in the mid-80s, they had a car that crashed through their big picture windows. It's on the, the main downtown street, Jasper Avenue, and somehow a car crashed in there. There was another time when a member of parliament drove her motorcycle right into the shop and parked it inside. <laughs> yeah, so many great stories about different book launches where they had lineups way down the street. Yeah, it's a, it's a gorgeous old building with lots of dark wood inside. And I moved to Edmonton in 1979 and I've been going to that bookstore ever since. There used to be other independent bookstores during the time that I lived in Edmonton, but Audrey's is the one that is still hanging in there. And I'm so grateful. I have attended so many author events, poetry readings. My Lesbian Plus Book Club met there for years up until the pandemic. Now we're meeting online. Um, but yes, they're just such a part of the community and it's really important to me to be able to find other readers there. Uh, that was another question that Sean asked, what exactly is an independent bookstore? So I had to research that too, which is basically these are stores that are independently owned and not part of a chain. Sometimes there are more than one location, so Canada's largest independent bookstore is McNally Robinson, and they have a, a store in Winnipeg and one in Saskatoon. And they're actually also connected to McNally Jackson in New York City. There's a reason why they both have the name McNally, which you can look up if you want to find out more. Uh, and the other bookshop that I went to, the glass bookshop, is much newer. It only started a few years ago and they don't have a permanent home yet. It is being built so they're in a pop-up location right now in, a, in an art gallery actually and uh, they were serving free ice cream, Kind Ice Cream, which is a, a local company. Oh, delicious. I had the chocolate milk variety and it tasted just like a fudgesicle. One of the other cool things I found at the glass bookshop were these Vivek Shreya t-shirts. Um, I don't feel like I need to have one, much as I love her and all her books, <laughs> but on the back side of the t-shirt there's even a list of all of the things that she's created over the years. It's totally, totally cool. And then when the bookstore closed at five, there was a poetry festival event held in adjacent space. So all in all, it was a fabulous day. And if you're interested in the book 
books that I bought. Keep listening. If book haul videos aren't your thing, you can just turn it off here because now I'm going to be talking about this big stack of books that I got. Half of them at one bookstore and half at the other. Um, including this free one, which is a short story by Miyako Kawakami, translated by, who is it translated by? David Boyd, Chandelier, a nice, a bonus thing. This was published by Europa Editions. And another little short story in a gorgeous edition. Uh, this one is by the Canadian author Andre Alexis, Winter or a Town Near Palgrave. And this one is Coach House Books, lovely linen paper, and it was published especially for Independent Booksellers Day. They made 1,000 copies. Did I mention it's signed? Yeah. Nice. I got a lot of poetry. This book by Jason Purcell, uh, Swollening. Jason is one of the co-owners of the Glass Bookshop and uh, Jason is non-binary and this is the, the, they're about the intersection of queerness and illness staking a place for the queer body that has been made sick through living in this world. So it's, it's described as part poetic experiment and part memoir and it's published by my favorite Canadian publisher, Arsenal Pulp Press. Shani Mutu is one of my favorite Canadian authors. So this is uh, her new collection of poetry, Cane Fire, published by Book Hug. And Mutu is also an artist, and so there's her art on the cover and inside. Really excited about this. I also got a Kweke Imezi's collection of poetry. Content warning, everything. <laughs> And if you don't know, Akweke Emeze is uh, non-binary and a fabulous writer. Looking forward to this too. Warsan Shire, I think this is her first full collection. I read um, an earlier, um, shorter collection of hers and I'm really excited to get to a full-length one. Look at the back. So that lovely design. It came out from Penguin Canada. Orsan Shire is Somali British, living in Los Angeles right now, I think. And isn't that a great title too? Bless the daughter raised by a voice in her head. This will be my third book by John Elizabeth Stinsey, another non-binary writer. Uh, my Volcano. So this one is a novel that's called Pre-Apocalyptic, set in 2016, and there's some kind of, um, I think, supernatural event that happens. Volcano erupts in, I think, yeah, Central Park. Looking forward to it. Arsenal Pulp Press. And Dandelion. So this one is by Jamie Chai Yun Liu. And it starts out in the mid 1980s in a small town in British Columbia where um, a girl's mother leaves and never comes back. And it's not until she's an adult that she decides to find out what happened to her. And so she travels to Brunei, uh, the island of Borneo. Um, that's about all I know about it. That's enough for me. Looking forward to it. Arsenal Pulp Press. And 
another novel called A Hero for Our Time. This is by uh, Nabum Ruthnam. Now, the other book that I read of his was nonfiction. It's called Curry, Eating, Reading, and Race. <laughs> Um, and this one also deals with racism. I think it's about a, a startup educational tech company and um, um, diversity issues in Canada. Okay, we got some cat interruptions here. You go on your perch. Ugh. One more novel. Uh, this one is a Canadian classic, Wild Geese by Martha Ostenso, which I have never read. I keep meaning to. Now I have my own copy. There's no excuse. This book, I think, was first published in the 1920s, and it is uh, considered a forerunner in the new realist movement in Canadian writing. The author was born in Norway, um, grew up mostly in the northern part of the United States and then moved to Canada when she was 15 years old. So, set in a farming community in northern Manitoba. And the last book that I bought is one that I've talked about on booktube before. This is uh, an art catalog of Christy Belcourt's art and I've got a whole video looking at her beautiful art that's in here. But I'm reading a book right now that features Christy Belcourt's art. This one is called Buffalo is the New Buffalo. It's by Chelsea Vowell, a collection of short stories. And as I was looking at it this morning, <laughs> that was when I realized, hey, that's Christy Belcourt's art on that cover. And sure enough, I found the same painting in this book, which I thought was pretty cool. And strangely, I am reading another short story collection at the same time, Rawi Hodge's Stray Dogs. I say strangely because normally I just have one short story collection going at the same time. As a matter of fact, right now I've got three because Sean is reading short stories to me on Voxers from another collection. But when I put these two side by side, there are a lot of similarities with the uh, kind of wispy star background um, and even the colors, and yet... This one is just so much more beautiful. Love it. Just love it. All right, so that was my fun time at Independent Bookstore Day. I'd love to hear if any of you went out and celebrated by going to an independent bookstore. And I will see you all soon in the next video. Bye for now.